Hello and welcome to the very first tutorial in the Sunrise 2.x workshop video series. Today we are covering the project startup and some of the basic functionalities of the files within a project. So to start our project we will go to File, New, Sunrise Project. Here we need to specify the controller IP address. This is a static IP and the controller does not support dynamic IPs. So I'm going to keep this default IP and hit next. Here we can name our project. So I'm going to name my tutorial project and hit next. Next, we have to select what robot we're using. If we're trying to use a med robot and we do not see the med here, we need to install the uh, KUKA option package for the LBR med extension and the LBR med framework in the um, option package management center within Workbench. I will be making a video uh, tutorial on that later, so I will post that in the description when it's available. In terms of the LBR EVA and the LBR MED, if we were to select the EVA and we go to the media flange type, you can see all the different type of media flanges like the pneumatish and the electrish. Um, but for us, we are just going with the MED because I have an LBR MED 14. And luckily with the MED, there's only one media flange, so it shouldn't be too hard of a choice. Secondly, we can change the mounting orientation. So if you have it mounted to a wall or a ceiling, you would add this uh, degree offset. For me, mine's actually mounted at a 15 degree angle around the Y axis, so I will change that. We hit next, and we can see a brief summary of what our new Sunrise project looks like. Go ahead and uncheck this box since we'll be creating our own Sunrise application. Go ahead and hit finish, and it should create the tutorial project for us. If you do not see the project explorer right there and your screen looks like this, you can go to window, perspective, reset perspective, and hit yes, and it will pop up just for you. So the first thing we're gonna to go to is the station setup.cat. This is kind of like the skeleton of the project. It allows you to configure stuff, add option packages to this specific project. So underneath the topology, we've already set the robot that we wanted to use, but say you wanted to reuse this project for maybe an, an LBR Med 7, you could select it, delete it, grab the LBR Med 7 and push it over and it'll add it underneath the cabinet. For software, these are all software packages that I've actually installed already. So underneath install new software, I would have installed the software inside of this little management center. So this is installed in the actual Sunrise Workbench, but may or may not be installed in my project. So anything that has a check mark is installed within the physical tutorial project. So say I want to install Sunrise Servoing, go ahead and click that, and now it's queued for me to install later. When it comes to configuration, we have quite a few different options. Uh, the two biggest options that I want to mention are the IP address. So here you could change your static IP. If you're using an address of type 192 or 172.16 or 172.17, please select this in the drop-down box as this will actually signal the controller to reassign new internal IPs in order to mitigate any IP interferences. So if I had a 192.168.1.220 IP for the robot, I would need to select this option so that the controller does not interfere with your IP address. The only other thing that I would like to mention is go to enable hand guiding in automatic mode and select it as false. So with an LBR robot, you can hand guide both in an application via some enable hand guiding motion command, and you can hand guide outside of an application just by hitting an enabling switch. This is the latter option. So this will not allow someone to hand guide outside of an application inside of a test mode, it totally makes sense because you want to be able to hand guide whenever you want outside of an application, whether that's to touch up a point or get the robot in a better position or outside of a singularity. Inside of an automatic mode, as the integrator, you want to make sure that the customer, the end user, can only hand guide when you allow them to hand guide. And this is for like safety reasons. So you want to make sure that you're only giving them control to hand guide when you say it's ready to hand guide inside of an application. 
which is why we have this as false. In installation, this is where we will push all of our topology, the software, the configuration to the robot. This will push the project. So go ahead and hit install, save, and apply. And it will push what you've saved so far to the robot controller to take about like five to seven minutes. So if your configuration's installed correctly on the robot controller and you try manually jogging the robot via the smart pad, you might have noticed that the robot actually did not move. And if you check the station setup uh, tile on the smart pad, you probably notice there's a bunch of errors. So that's what we're gonna take care of right now. We're gonna go to the safety configurations uh, tab within the project. Wait for it to load, there we go. Go ahead and unselect all six rows in the customer PSM, which is the permanent safety monitoring tab. By unchecking these, you're basically stating that you understand and acknowledge the risk of operating a robot. Um, we, in a second video, we will actually discuss how to set up a proper safety configuration and what's the difference between a PSM and an ESM and when to use which one. But for now, KUKA has set up their own PSM and this will be enough safety to get you started in the beginning stages of a project. The next step is to go to the object templates. Here you could set up a tool or a physical object or a virtual object. So for example, if we wanted to go to tool, we could right click, say new tool, say gripper, and we have a gripper. We could set the TCP, could give it a transformation on the tool. Um, if we click on gripper, we can give it mass, we could give it load data, we could make it safety related. So this is how you would set up a tool, which we'll talk about more in a separate video. In the scene graph, this is kind of like a visualization in how your frames and tools are actually connected to other spatial objects. So in this case, we have the world and the robot is connected to the world. Say we wanted to add our tool, we could say, yep, yeah, I want to add a child to, or a child object to my robot, which is the parent object. And there we go. Now we have added a spatial object, the gripper, to the flange of our robot. So we'll talk more about the scene graph and object templates in a second video. So here's the source folder. This is essentially where we will be creating Java packages, holding our Java classes. This is where we will actually be writing our robot programs in. So the next video, we will be actually talking about how to move the robot via programmatically, um, logging some messages to the smart pad just to kind of get a feel of how programming in Sunrise Workbench is. If you want to push your project to the controller, all you have to do is save the project, which it's saved currently, and go ahead and hit the synchronize project button. For me right now, it's not going to synchronize because I'm actually not connected to a robot, but for those who are connected to a robot, you'll see a pop-up window that says something like, would you like to push the project and you will see an option that you can push from your local PC to the actual controller. Go ahead and synchronize to the robot and all of your changes that you will have made in your project will be replicated on the controller. Thank you for listening and this will now conclude our video on project startup inside of Sunrise Workbench. Mm -hmm.